How can we give our kids and teens relief from social media pressure? That's the topic we're going to be addressing today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. Flourishment is sponsored by Access More. Today I have with me John Parrott, who is the Director of Resources for Reformed Youth Ministries. He has served in student ministry for over 20 years. He's the host of the Local Youth Worker Podcast and is a frequent conference speaker. He's the author of several books, including his most recent Social Media Pressure. Welcome, John. I am so delighted to have you on the show today. This is such an important topic. Tina, thank you so much for having me on. Yes, you're right. It is very important, and I'm looking forward to, to talking with you about this. And in this second portion of our conversation with John Parrott, we're going to talk about some practical things that parents and teens, if you happen to be a teen and you're listening, can do to get relief from social media pressure. So let's talk about the pressure point. How can kids unhook from that pressure? Because I know even as an adult, there's times when I just, I can't keep from grabbing onto my phone. There is a pressure to keep working on that on that mm -hmm. social media post and checking to see if it's really getting anywhere. So how can teens get relief from that? Yeah, um, there are so many ways. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I mean, uh, towards the end of each entry in this devotional, there's something called an alongside practice. And so as people work through the, the devotional, you'll see a lot of practical tips on how to health engage with your um, social media and smartphone in a healthy way because as you said we don't want to just throw it out all together um, but we do need to put some some boundaries in place and so there's a lot of just helpful suggestions suggestions practical suggestions i mean one of the alongside practices is just to get together with your friends and go do something together um, and not share it at all, you know, <laughs> to um, leave your phones behind. And obviously, since we're talking to teenagers uh, with your parents' permission, if they're okay with that, because I know parents want to get in touch with their their students, um, but just try to encourage uh, students to get together, um, go out to, to dinner together, go for a walk and uh, a nature trail, something along those lines, and just try to do something like that um, to just get get a break and to get off of the devices. Because yeah, as you said, as adults, um, we need to hold ourselves accountable as well. And to, to realize that um, while these devices can be helpful and many of us, because of our callings and careers, we have to be on them to a certain extent, but then to also try to find those times to step away. And so, um, I mean, that's just, you know, one practical example. I mean, something else is encouraging students to to wake up without their device and to put their device uh, to sleep before they go to sleep. And, and some of that I've, I've borrowed from Andy Crouch's book, uh, TechWise Family. Um, but I think it's just important to bookend our days without technology and um, especially for um, students uh, to, to have time where they wake up in the morning um, to go get some fresh air, step outside to, you know, brew a cup of coffee and, you know, enjoy just um, something tactile um, instead of picking up their device. And same as they, they go to sleep. I think that can just be very helpful. And studies have shown just uh, the benefits of doing that. I noticed two things in what you were saying. The first of all is bookending the day without technology. That is a place that is a sacred space we could put God in, right? Exactly. Yes. And that's something too. So um, kind of gradually throughout the book, trying to encourage students to um, fill those spaces uh, with God's word, as you said, um, a, a verse that, that comes to mind often is um, from, from Jeremiah, the heart is deceitful above all else and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And so for me, I've thought about, you know, that means as I wake up and I get out of the bed, my heart is speaking lies to me. And as I go throughout my day, my heart is speaking lies to me. And so trying to get students to see that, you know, as they wake up, as they go about their day, as they look in the mirror, getting ready, their their heart is is lying to them and is feeding them with uh, so many lies that are destructive. And, you know, as you get on social media, you think of all the comparison, all the, the body image issues that are related to social media. Well, if we're beginning our day in God's word, that doesn't mean all of those difficulties will go away and we're still going to be walking around with a heart that lies to us, but we are 
filling ourselves with truth, that God's word is truth. And uh, we need truth to be speaking back to the lies. And so, yes, that's a, a definite encouragement that we want students to kind of book in those days as well with, with God's word and his truth. It doesn't mean it won't affect you, but it's like taking plenty of antioxidants to give you that's the resilience you need so it doesn't destroy you and you can respond right. to it better. And I also noticed that you were talking about this in a way that sets it up so we can recognize it as idolatry. We mm. can worship our phones and not realize that that's what we're doing. Isn't that true? Oh, yes, for, for sure. And, and that's something, you know, sometimes is what we talk about idolatry. I mean, it can be discussed in a very um, shameful way or shaming, you know, and um, but I do think, I mean, it's important for us to um talk to, to, to our children that, um, yes, their, their hearts, as Calvin said, are idol factories, that they're constantly churning out new idols, but we need to do that in a way as, as parents and as youth workers and older mentors in the lives of these students, um, in an empathetic way to say, Hey, we struggle in the same way. We, we, we make these devices idols, just like you do, that there's nothing wrong with you, but this is just a reality of the, the fallen human heart that we are going to be prone to turn anything and everything into a false God. And more often than not, um, these are good things that we're turning into a false God, not, not bad things. Um, it's, it's often things that can be good that uh, we just make ultimate things and we begin to worship them. And so it's important to be uh, teaching the next generation, just these realities of, of their heart, even though it can be a harsh truth, it's, it's truth nonetheless. Well, that's the difference between God's good gift of conviction and the enemy's counterfeit of shame is mm -hmm. that God's conviction helps us move forward. Mm -hmm. The enemy's counterfeit of shame will always hold us back and put us down and not let us move at all. So if you are finding that when you're dealing with the social media pressures and feeling shame and not wanting to do anything and putting yourself down, that isn't from God. And I, I love that you're bringing this in a positive, forward moving, growth oriented perspective. And you've got practical steps that kids can do in each one of those devotional pieces and that's important because we need to be tactile. We are tactile mm -hmm. human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's right. And so, so often, you know, it seems like we can finish a chapter of a book and then it's kind of like, okay, so what? So what, what do I do now? And so hopefully some of those practices at the end of each entry uh, is just kind of an action item, um, you know, and some of them are, are creative and some of them encourage creativity of, uh, you know, here's the basic idea, but utilize some of your own creativity and, and do this in, in a unique way. And so I hope that it just kind of drives home the main theme of each chapter and, and gives um, something tangible to the reader that they can act on. It'll help them remember your message and creative acts, things that we do tangibly with our hands, like people used to do decades ago before we had cell phones that we worked on all day long. We were engaging different parts of our brain. So it's healthy for our neurology to do tactile activities. So you've got like a double bonus in your book there. So that's fantastic. How can people stay connected with your ministry and find more benefits and resources, plus get a copy of your new book? Yeah. So if, if people go to rym.org, I'm the director of resources for RYM, as you said, and uh, we have student conferences. Uh, people can check out. We're actually, we'll be starting those uh, next week um, out in Colorado and then Florida and Maryland and Texas. Um, and we also have training uh, that people can be a part of. And then through our resources, we have a podcast, as you said, the local youth worker. So people can, can check out um, our work there as well as free Bible studies people can access. And then in reference to the book um, right now, it's on Amazon available and um, new growth press. People can check it out there as well. So what is one takeaway, one last thing, if you had to leave the audience with something that you would want every audience member to hear? Hmm. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, as I think of the adults uh, who are listening, um, if they're youth workers, if they're parents, counselors, um, I think it's important for us to, to realize that a conversation is something that's very powerful. Um, it, we can think it's just, you know, something kind of um, common every day. And, but uh, our students are longing for adult interaction and our students are often 
you know, lectured to every day when they go to school um, by their teachers, by coaches, and they want someone to to listen to them. And so I think for us as adults to, you know, I think with especially social media, parents can feel ill-equipped sometimes and can can think, think I'm not the most tech savvy person, so I don't know what to say. But I think just sitting down and listening to, to your student, listening to your child and and really listening and 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 trying to understand what it is they're wrestling with. And um, I, I just think that will go so far um, with the next generation is just having adults sitting down and engaging in conversation uh, with their children or students and uh, learning from them, you know, as, as they share about uh, some of these social media platforms that we're clueless about, um, but trying to walk alongside with them. And, um, you know, I hope this devotion can, can be a part of that. I mean, it's in a sense, it's a script to, to sit down and to engage uh, with someone else um, with these issues. So that's kind of a final word is to sit down and to have conversation and to listen. And each chapter has that alongside part, which is so important. Mm -hmm. And I love what you've said about listening because listening is loving. It's just mm -hmm. great insights. Thank you for coming on the show to Jadron. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tina, for having me. I really appreciate it. I hope that all of you listening were encouraged, inspired, and informed by this conversation with John Parrott. And I also hope that you will come back for the next episode of Flourishment. Flourishment is part of the Spark Media Network and can be found on the Edify app.